pleasure of introducing someone that many of you know. She says that she's a guest in our club, but she's here quite a bit because she lives both here and in Des Moines. Um, Elaine Graham Estes. She is the daughter of James and Zelma Graham, who ran Graham's Red Station in Springfield for over 30, uh, over 60 years. How many people ever went to Graham's? How many people have tried Elaine's barbecue sauce? It's delicious, and we were lucky enough to get some in our office the other day. And so, you're really nice to her. She might sell you some also. <laughs> uh, but um, Elaine still holds patent on that famous barbecue sauce, and um, she did leave Springfield to attend Drake College at um, Drake University in Des Moines, and she also met her husband, John Estes Jr. There. She then received. Um, uh, after graduating from Drake, she received a master's degree in library science from the University of Illinois and worked for the public library of Des Moines for 39 years and spent 19 of those years as the director. She is a member of the Springfield Public Schools Hall of Fame and she's also one of DSM Magazine's Sages Over 70. And I think she's a little, might be a little uh, upset with me that I put that in there <laughs> because it shows her age. But it's quite an honor, and we're so happy to have Ms. Elaine Ramesses here with us today. Thank you, Krista. I'll forgive you for, uh, but everybody, a lot of people here already know me. And thanks so much to my co-presenter, John Sellers, who knows almost about, about this as I do. John, thanks for I'm just here for the AV club. <laughs> 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 is his 
not dry. And um, dad and mother also were the purchasers. I got to go along when, uh, when I was not in school. Thus, I know the companies with whom they did business and who did business with brands. Purchase local is a new phrase that was not new then. We purchased local. We went to the packing houses and we chose and then chose the meats from the packing houses. Our menu was barbecued spare ribs, prime rib beef sliced, prime loin sliced. Um, we had uh, ham sliced and it was real ham in those days. And then we had small bologna sliced and one of these customers here, Justin, he remembers the bologna sandwich. We had real meat, there was no brisket was not, and full pork were not all my dad's choices of good meat. <laughs> uh, so we went to Ralph's Packing House, which was way out on Sandwich Street, and MFA, which was on East Mill Street. Uh, we sold our homemade uh, potato salad and coleslaw and chili. Uh, we sold small bags of Brooks uh, potato chips, and people would buy barbecue sauce and ask us to put it into their potato chips. So that's another way of using those. For catering purposes, uh, to the menu was added baked beans. We sold candy bars, namely Heath and uh, Almond Joy. We sold cigars, not cigarettes, cigars. And we sold soda pop, three two beer, draft uh, pints, and quarts. Our um, soda fountain was purchased when a uh, city drugstore went out of business at uh, Louisville and Central, now a parking lot, and it was right across the street from the then post office. We had uh, foremost ice cream in the soda fountain. Bread was delivered from Tasty on uh, our food mill, Colonial on um, Sadler Street, and uh, Wholesome, which was down on Grand. They filled our racks as they delivered. I will talk about, um, uh, mention many um, names that normally one would consider confidential as to customers and associates. But because this is part of Springfield history, I'm telling you some names today um, because it's for good Springfield history. Um, Coca-Cola was on uh, Clay Street. They delivered. Andy was our salesman. Sorry, Sally, I don't think you're here today. <laughs> the, the rices of the Coca-Cola were longtime customers. Cookie's just a little bit older than I am, and his sister Cookie had the same interest we did in collecting antiques. Nehi Bottling Company was owned by Mr. Montgomery. They were on uh, Benton, that building is still there, and I think Coca Cola owns that building now. Mr. Montgomery would come by and look in our cooler cases, and uh, he'd say, You need more country club in that case. Uh, uh, the Montgomery Soul uh, Country Club, Paul Staff, and Royal Crown Cola. His daughters, uh, Gladys Buckner and Mrs. Paul uh, Young, ran uh, the office for their dad. Other businesses with whom we did business were the Grant and Reed's Pickle Company. The Greasy Dyke Beer Company was uh, distributed by Virgil Anderson Sr. Virgil Anderson Jr. is still living. He's a bit older than I am, but we talked every now and then. Um, Quinn Coffee Company was downtown, and you could smell the roast going on all over. Our salesman was Mr. Simon. Mr. Simon also had a hobby of growing evergreens in a wonderful garden, and we did invite him out to see his garden. Bates Grocery Store was up the street on Washington. Mr. and Mrs. Bates and their son-in-law, Marshall Cassidy, ran that grocery store. Well, Sissy, Marshall Cassidy's daughter, is just about my age um, and died a few years ago. Carl B. Harlow was their distributor, as well as Jennings Beverage Company. Milligan's Wholesale uh, got delivered. Uh, the whole part we bought our slicers for our meat from, and the Smith family still keep in touch. Uh, we bought our Allen adding machine for 
uh, acres and basically should be out. Um, our bit of Ross Bingham and their son John supply uh, were on our national, they were supplying <coughs> the Hewlett family right down the street here. Jess Hewlett, his dad, Roy, and their family were also suppliers. We had a large pine room uh, which was available for private rentals and private parties uh, which we catered. Graham's business was essentially threefold. Uh, we had food, we had barbecue sauce, and we had motels and rental properties. Uh, we, Kermit O'Neill had a shoe repair on our property. Yancey Pike had a barber shop on the, uh, on the property. There were other uh, rentals. The motels were built in the uh, um, Missouri cut stone. Our carpenters were um, Latimer, Leffler, and the Williams brothers. And Dad had those custom built on the property. They're all gone now except the one single one that's still back there. Whitehead Transfer was across the street on um, uh, Washington and Chestnut. And uh, we own property adjoining that, and their son later bought part of it back from us. Kendall Mill was uh, east on um, uh, Chestnut. Mr. Woody was a regular customer. He could even eat Graham's food after he had a tracheotomy. That was early in the days of the year of having tracheotomies, and Mr. Woody was a long time customer for Graham. Um, the, um, Karshmer business was um, on Pine Street and uh, Washington over to Jefferson, and the Karshmers were and Kaplan's were longtime customers and friends. Uh, Karshmer's installed our um, ventilating system of fans there, and David Karshmer ate lunch daily. Uh, the wheelers of the furniture store lived up the street on Washington from our business north of Washington and were customers and friends. Elkin Squires uh, printed a small miniature book, a cookbook that we had with our salt, uh, suggesting how people could use the salt. I think Elkin Squires is still going. Uh, Dan Savage was a painter and um, on the building he painted uh, where our names were and all the information, he also painted our vehicle. Uh, we got our gas up on uh, Chestnut and Denton at Wise Stilling Station. Across the street was Gamble Stilling Station. And uh, the only third place that we got gas is Rooks, and I still buy gas from Danny Rooks. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Jarvis was a private uh, automobile repair and kept our cars going all through the Depression and war. Um, our motels were built on the same property as this Washington and Chestnut that I told you about. Um, the um, uh, Long's Furniture Company, we bought furniture for those motels, and the father and his sons uh, were all a part of that uh, Ralph Long uh, um, Bill and Deemer were all part of that family. And those are the father, the uncles, and the grandfathers of our Billy Long, our auctioneer and congressman. And uh, the Longs uh, were, uh, and I can remember seeing where their grandfather sat up in the store downtown. And, uh, Ralph was a large customer for a long time. Um, we, I explained our menu earlier as being high quality. Uh, was there a real prime rib? And my friend Bob Millman, recently retired from Green County Archives, said, what did you do during the war? And I said, well, Dad expanded the menu then to include our uh, barbecue chicken and whole fried white fish was the way we supplemented that. Um, Fort Leonard Wood broke uh, ground uh, this 
had a business on Google and several other places, was also a customer who we uh, custom cooked. Individuals who hunted brought their game in to have it barbecued, and whole hogs were popular. Uh, I was interested as Cuba is coming back, one of our customers who was from Cuba and taught at Berry College always had a celebration with whole hogs that we cooked for him. Uh, we catered extensively to the Chamber of Commerce. The manager was Louis Reps, uh, who was the director, and their office was on Walnut Street, and Louis Reps was a, uh, a long time and close customer of my dad's. Um, one of the um, um, events that uh, dad um, catered was when the Simon uh, Bolivar uh, statue was dedicated July the 5th, 1948. The president of Bolivia came to uh, Bolivar, Missouri and presented to President Truman the statue of Simon Bolivar. And my dad uh, well, had a stand at that location for that day. Um, Lily Tulip opened um, Glenstone and was dedicated June the 1st, 1952. Prove it. I want to stop that from with the dedication day of uh, July the 1952. Uh, Thompson Sales uh, moved from that beautiful building right around the corner on Kimbrew to right across the street here on uh, St. Louis Street and then uh, catered for the Thompson Catholic um, um, uh, Pontiac uh, thing. And um, our Pontiac uh, van was painted by um, uh, Savages. The back of it said, hit me easy, I'm full of Graham's barbecue sauce. <laughs> Come in. 
Brad Browns was on Commercial Street, John. <laughs> and uh, Brad Brown, uh, uh, we did demonstrations over there, and he would supply the ham cubes, and we do the barbecue sauce uh, demo, demos. Darby's Market, well, the reason I said it, John had an association with the Brad Brown store. <laughs> Uh, Darby's Market on um, Central, clear through Mr. Darby, clear through his daughter Judy, where we uh, sold our barbecue sauce. Comstock Market on um, uh, Carney was a big customer. Comstock used to say that Comstock's wife worked along with him, much like Mother did with Dad. And Comstock always said, well, if we don't have anything else to leave these ladies, we'll leave them a good place to work. <laughs> The Rice Sisters were in business then, and with customers. Ramey Supermarket opened up on uh, Glenstone and Sunshine, and were porters uh, on National uh, Balloons Markets, B-I-L-Y-E-U. The Gantt Store was on National, where the National Art Store is now. Morlocks Grocery, Sharks uh, Grocery Store, other customers included C.P. Hicks Insurance, Ernst Jewelry Store, Gammon's Jewelry Store, Ike Martin's Store down on Campbell that had the, it was the great big white horse in the window that I just love to see. And in one of his son's books, he tells about uh, eating Graham's barbecue. Um, Martin's book, uh, Piano Store, was downtown. And Margaret Martin also was a Girl Scout, uh, Girl Scout leader at the same time my mother was. Jack Webster Oil by Samsung was a regular customer. Tommy Thomas who sold salesman shoes at hers. The Roundtree family, Sis Roundtree always uh, was curb service. And I just read in the paper recently that Mr. Roundtree was one of the first school superintendent in that little school. C.R. Today, who owned this hotel and later in its later life, was a regular customer. The Marks uh, Men's Clothing Store downtown at um, uh, the, the um, Barth Brothers had relatives out of town who came once a year to collect their share of the, of the and they always brought them to our business to eat. That's now where John's uh, museum uh, is, but there were quite a few more brothers there. Um, Mickey Owen, who played uh, baseball in those days, was a regular uh, customer, and um, uh, Mickey would come over to the business, but his beautiful wife uh, stayed at the Colonial Hotel and we delivered to her, and I always loved her in the delivery because I got a nice <laughs> Jim Hunt, the mayor of, uh, oh, well, the, the other thing about Mickey, later in his life, he started raising pot and fish, and that's the first that I ever, ever heard of pot and fish, and he took us out to his farm to see where those were being raised. Um, Jim Owens, down at Branson Mayor, was a longtime customer, and so Dan saw Branson grow a lot. Weldon King, the international photographer and the PEO person, was a customer from the time he was at Dury College, clear through the Apollo and the Gaudi expeditions, and um, they, all of the uh, things that he did to accomplish, and um, remained a friend and a customer clear through his retirement back in Springfield. Bill Kent, his mother, uh, leased a uh, part of the store in uh, Savage Juliet. And so Bill Kent was another connection from Drury College uh, to the bank, to Glasgow's Taylors, to Village Chile, to City Council, to Mary Marialis, and President of the Schroeder Club. Um, Citizens Bank on Commercial Street, John Watkins was there. Bill was the president of the Springfield newspaper. All of those were uh, great customers. Uh, the Kansas City Monarchs did burn starting series and exposition games at White City Ballpark, which is the site of the Assemblies of God uh, headquarters on Boonville. And Joe Lyons had a stand there. We could, we could meet for that stand. The ballpark people, the ball players, and their men.
stranded in Alaska. And he sent for my, uh, asked my dad to sponsor him back from Alaska. Mr. Pierce worked for that forever. And sometimes my folks 